There are many weapons in Fallout 3. Some are cobbled together by the average wastelander who's just trying to get by. Some are handcrafted with hate to kill a loved one. But only one weapon is fancy enough to have a title in its name. Can you beat Fallout 3 with only the Mist Launcher? Up first, just like in rehearsal, was my birth. Todd welcomed the lovely Paulina into the world, my mother flatlined, and the next thing I knew, I was alive. Believe it or not, explosives will be worthless because the Mist Launcher is a variation of the Missile Launcher, and the Missile Launcher family of weapons are in the big gun side of the tree, while grenades and throwable explosives are on the explosive side. That makes the special setup for this challenge kind of a pain in the ass. There's only one place to find the Mist Launcher, and it's locked behind a 75 lockpick door. And if you haven't noticed yet, I'm playing on console for a reason I'll get to in a second, so I can't quick save quick load my way through the door. Intelligence is a necessity for getting skill points when leveling up. Endurance is for big guns, and to hopefully grow into an emotionless bullet sponge later in life. Charisma has to be at least 4 to get the child at heart perk. Of course luck is a social influencer that affects all skills. And the rest don't matter. I made my HUD orange, just like the default color in New Vegas, hated it instantly, but refused to change it back, and before I knew what hit me, I was almost 10 years old. Can you believe it? A surprise party all for me. Music, balloons, a floating clown. I had a great time until it was time to go kill the dog. In an effort to cause as many uncomfortable situations as possible, I stuck coffee mugs in everyone's pockets thinking if I got the entire vault to hate me, someone with a weapon would bash me over the skull with a party hat. When that didn't work, I settled for executing the roach, and pumped BBs into the gaping hole where my dad's heart used to be before I destroyed it. With my father having just been pelted into unconsciousness, Jonas told me to think about how much fun a child could have with a gun. I got a fantastic birthday picture, dad chucked me for lice, and I started picking skills. There's more to this than meets the eye. My skills were big, big guns, barter, and sneak. You should be concerned that the challenge involved a missile launcher, and I've chosen to sneak. Three years later, it's the end of the world. The rad roaches I mourned in another life ripped Officer Kendall's leg off and were moments away from eating Butch's mother when I failed to convince him to leave her behind. In the atrium, I alerted the guards to my presence to save the lives of two innocent vault dwellers. I'm not sure where they went. One second they were about to make a run for it, and the next they were gone. I'm also not sure why there were so many roaches. I didn't question it. My dream of pretending to command an army of roaches had become a reality. The only man they weren't willing to assault was the overseer. The vault door doesn't matter anymore. We've got a wasteland to save. With 19 points to spend at level 2, I felt stuck in my own shoes. Lockpick of 75 is a must. Barter is needed for buying missiles. Medicine and sneak are crucial. One level isn't enough to raise any skills high enough to survive me out here by my lonesome, and I'm completely incapable of hurting anything until I get the Mist Launcher located at Fort Independence. Compared to other places I've had to travel to, Fort Independence is a dream due to how close it is to Vault 101. Seconds after my body plummeted down from orbit like an ODST, Defender Morgan told me to keep my head down as if that's not what I just damn near broke my legs trying to do. In order to get my hands on the Mist Launcher, a couple things will have to happen as I've already alluded to. Starting with Scrap Metal, I'm playing on the worst console known to man, the Series X so I can't console command hundreds of missiles into my inventory. I'm certainly not playing on an Xbox because back in February, Drunk Paul did so much damage to his Fallout 3 install on his Mac that it's been broken beyond repair for half a year. It's also unrelated to some commenters saying my last New Vegas runs didn't count because of mods. Of course, just like with the Dark Gun Challenge, when you actually need scrap metal, it's almost impossible to find. On the west coast, I used beanbags to become god. Back here in the nation's capital, I'll be using recycled steel to accomplish the same goal. Together, hand in hand, we can rebuild this wasteland. All we have to do is recycle our plastic, turn off the air conditioner that shouldn't even be conscious in the first place, and we can save our planet from us. I should explain what I'm doing instead of just lingering on a bunch of nothing. I'm gonna use scrap metal to power level myself up to the point where I can kick down any unlocked door. To not get too carried away early, I won't spoil how this exploit works. Unbeknownst to me in the past, there are only 67 scrap metal in the entirety of Fallout 3. Megaton's got like two of them. However, sometimes if you search a pregnant metal box, you can find a scrap metal inside. On the topic of love, one of my eyes caught the attention of Mr. Burke. The lovely Paulina convinced Burke to lie to Tenpenny Tall Tower regarding the bomb being worshipped in the center of town. And I went outside to risk it all. You only live once. My lungs have been on the verge of collapse since I was born. There's no time for games. 
Colin wasn't as into me as I was, so I broke into Billy Creel's house, stole his CDs and his teddy bear, and continued my search for valuables in the women's bathroom. Someone left a fork and knife in the tub. Whoever it was figured out which utensil is the whore and was too horrified to stick around to tell anybody about it. I'll save you four minutes of frustration and boredom and tell you that I never found any scrap metal in Megaton. The Fallout Wiki's got a list of places to find scrap metal, but the problem is that every location in Fallout 3 is in Fallout 3, so it's a pain in the ass to get to. Subway tunnels, for instance, happen to be right in the pathway of you know who. From the safety of outside her render distance, I contemplated my move. The curse of Grandma Sparkle was sealed up just like Doom Guy. Impossible for it to smite me again. The c knew this. She knew Paulina was a being so far below her that she broke through the negativity barrier and ascended into god tier status. Just before entering her apartment, I decided to put the challenge on hold. This bitch dies. Killing her in her own house will stop the curse forever. Unless she f***ing vanishes out of thin air. In all my years, I never expected her to leave like that. There are no exits. You saw her run inside, and I was right in front of the f***ing door. There's nowhere she could have gone. What we've learned here today is that Grandma Sparkle is not a person. She's an idea. Anyone can be Grandma Sparkle. Any fool with a gun can dress like a slut and become Grandma Sparkle. Yeah, she's back. I'm not sure where she went or where she came from. I didn't see any meteors kiss the sky over DC. Regardless, there's only room in this madman's mind for one deity, and I've already told you what I've got planned for me. I sat there with her all through the night. Did a f***ing sweet jump over this bush, reminded the kid that I'm still not helping him, exploded all three of my legs in a freak minefield accident, and entered the Hubris Comics Tunnels underpass. Being the only girl Paul in a comic shop, I should have known I'd get mauled to death. Closing the door to the closet while I was in it wasn't a safe choice either. I only came in here to find trash and was leaving disappointed. I went from one sewer to a drier sewer to the bowels of hell. The metro station I emerged from opened up into a train station. A single Brotherhood Paladin was on the scene and used his superior combat knowledge to best all the mutants remaining at the train convention. At level 3, I put all the points into Sneak, returned to Megaton, bought 26 stim packs from the Doctor, had two scrap metal, only needed one more, and remembered that the Super Duper Mart is full of boxes ready to be plundered. I hit the mother load, but that load did not come easy. Raiders of every shape and size swarmed me as I tried to learn how to computer. The Messiah rescued me when all other options failed. I was still mildly perturbed by the orange HUD, found a scrap metal, and with all three scrap metal, returned to Proctor Kasdan to begin the end, almost. I was still one scrap shy of achieving my final form. You know where they probably have steel out the ass. Fort Independence, and I just so happened to have lifted the key out of Kasdan's pocket. Down in America's colon, I found both the door to the mist launcher and an unbelievably three pieces of scrap metal. As we all know from Fallout New Vegas' Dead Money DLC, finding them isn't the hard part, it's getting out alive with them. The outcasts have not yet learned that I'm one of them, which means I'm an outcast to the outcast. Legally, I'm a normal person now, but there are some lines even I won't cross. In place of figuring out which combination of words could trick them into loving me, I stole the metal, ran away into the night, and waited like Jesus for three days for Kasdan and friend to calm down. Through a bunch of trial and error, I figured out that the Brotherhood outcast will be hostile towards me if anyone catches any scent of me down in the basement. I have to remain completely hidden at all times. After several attempts, I managed to succeed not a single time. So I went to the one place I knew would have all the metal in the world, a steel mill. The dozen or so raiders attacked me on sight. Presumably they thought I was there to save the big orange princess they had locked behind an electric fence. Inside the mill was far more elaborate than I thought. There's an entire community of people down there you can't interact with because they're always hostile, except for Smiling Jack. I found him in the fields of misery moments after reclaiming my fourth piece of metal. Just before saying my goodbyes, I had him repair a few things, and just like that he's dead. Silver linings, I found the barter bobblehead found yet another scrap metal in a toolbox, and left Evergreen Mills to take my rightful place in the world. To make the exploit work, you need an even number of scrap metal and a stealth boy or a high enough sneak skill. Proctor Kasdan can take some pre-war technology in exchange for supplies, like grenades or stim packs. Hand over all the stuff you've got, save the game, use the stealth boy, and steal back all the scrap metal you gave to him. Now turn it back in all but two of the scrap metal pickpocket him again, but get caught on purpose, and if you did it right, it will break the game. 
Fallout 3 now believes I have two scrap metal in my inventory when I really have none, so I can turn in an infinite number of them into Kasdan for as much 556 five, ammo, grenades, or stim packs as I desire. Alternatively, you can turn that endless scrap metal into Walter and Megaton for an easy experience infinity pool you can make at home without getting a permission slip signed. With this Fallout 3 Infinity Experience Exploit 2021 still working, I went all the way from level 3 to level 11 in a matter of minutes. What I didn't tell you about was Walter's insane wealth. He forks over 50 caps for 5 pieces of scrap metal, which put me north of 11,000 caps. Now, more than 10 minutes into this video, we're ready to go get the Mist Launcher from Fort Independence. Once I was there, I had to wait a little while longer. I got fed up with the f***ing notifications and it took minutes for them to finish popping up. With my highest lockpick skill possibly ever in a Fallout 3 video, I unsealed the door, examined all the goodies, obtained the mist launcher, and thought about where to test out this weapon I'd never used before this video. That cow in Wilhelm's Wharf is too unpredictable. Ghouls in the comic shop are a far better target. Talon Company intercepted me and forced my hand. As you can see, the Miss Launcher is not anything special. It's a missile launcher with erectile dysfunction. The missiles it fires don't fly through the air. They plop out onto the ground with an arc that makes the junk jet look like a propeller plane you got from a dollar store. Other than that, all the missile launchers got going for it is a higher damage than the regulation missile launcher. That's about all there is to the missile launcher. It's a pretty boring weapon. After wiping the floor with Talon Company, I came to the frightening realization that I picked the wrong system for this challenge. Ammunition for these kinds of powerful weapons in general is not a frequent find, and no amount of money can fix that or the bigger problem, time. Merchants restock their items on Sundays and Wednesdays, but in the irradiated hellscape that I call home, not many merchants have missiles. Moira isn't allowed to after what happened with Carl. Vendors like Lucky Harith and Crazy Wolfgang spawn too erratically to be relied on for anything. Some merchants do sell missiles, but you've got a completed quest for them first. Grouse at Paradise Falls is one of those pricks. That leaves Tenpenny Tower and Rivet City. The raiders living under the bridge near the Citadel were far more ravenous than usual. I talked to Stupid for a minute, made a massive donation to the church, bought out the entire hospital to spite everyone in the town, discovered the Jefferson Memorial, was briefly distracted by my speed when power walking, and Shrapnel had more miniature nuclear warheads than he had missiles. From there, I power leveled myself up to level 13 with Walter's help, became a cannibal, rounded out a few skills for no reason, waited a couple more days for vendors to restock, bought a single missile from Mick and Ralph, and checked in at Tenpenny Tower for more missiles. Gustavo at the gate thought I was the ghoul rambling into the intercom just before someone exploded. He had four missiles, so if you include the two I wasted getting in, I'm up two in only about ten minutes. After one more session, I'd gotten up to about 20 missiles, and with that, the real game began right around the time the sun started to set on this challenge. Earlier in the day, I checked my achievements for Fallout 3 and noticed that I hadn't hit level 14 yet. Waltered up to that level. The achievement didn't pop. I hit 15. Nothing. I hit 16. Nothing. 17. Nothing. That rubbed me the wrong way. Despite my Xbox being worse than shit at doing anything other than crashing for no reason, I decided to push the f***er beyond its natural limits. I'm gonna go straight to Vault 87 without ever entering Tranquility Lane on console. The Child at Heart perk granted me access to the caverns, and I had a non-standard goal in mind. There's a door, somewhere, with a 75 science terminal to unlock. I never found it, and that upset something deep inside me. Knowing I was moments away from heading to Smith Casey's garage, I took a chance, and the dividends this paid made what I would have made from not selling all my Dogecoin at 7 cents look like chump change. Maybe this is common knowledge, maybe not. I didn't know about it until this video. You can technically use the quick save quick load exploit on console to clip through walls. Sticky's following me by the way, he's unimportant. The real trick to this exploit is pulling it off with a controller. To clip through reality, you need to be constantly moving. Then you save while moving forward. Load that save while moving forward. Maybe you'll be a hair forward. Save, load, save, load, and you're through the gate to murder pass. I sat there for a second, relishing in what I'd accomplished, while also being sad, because I'll never have a reason to use this again. But as soon as Sticky mentioned Toledo, I swung the door to murder pass open hard enough to cause an F-85 tornado, and actually used my gun like a gun on these goons. Super Mutant Masters were out and about, getting in my way, acting like jackasses at every opportunity. A bit deeper, I hit the fire alarm to set off the disco lights and release the hostages. The missiles I had left were near and dear enough to my heart to be named. I couldn't send them to their death unless it was a glorious one. 
The radiation in the Geck room was an afterthought. Megaton doesn't have a hospital anymore. Remember, I bought them out and left the doctor with the memory of medical supplies. Taking the Geck got me abducted by the Enclave, as intended. The orange HUD was still as off-putting as ever, one of my babies was a misfire that did nothing, another killed an officer, and that left a single missile as my failsafe. President Eden gave me his virus, Sticky appeared out of nowhere and was never seen again. I unlocked the Deathclaw cage with my lockpick skill of 75. The beast was unleashed. I played in his box, and when I came out he was dead. My last missile made the noble sacrifice of killing an Enclave soldier, which got me one more missile and a missile launcher to improve my own. I'd say karma's a bitch, because I forgot that the door to the Citadel is sealed off, leaving me with three choices. I couldn't kidnap any of the missiles off this Brotherhood of Steel Paladin, leaving me with two choices. I can save scum my way around the collapsed side of the Citadel, eventually getting under the map itself, or I can just walk around the one barrier the Enclave put up. Colonel Autumn waited for me in the heart of Project Purity. Picking the right angle to warp through the glass required some thought. The more finicky the position you can jam yourself into before you start clipping, the better. I chose to climb up on the railing to deliver a message over the intercom. Keep jumping, keep moving, keep saving, keep loading, and you'll get through the wall eventually. All that remains is Augustus Autumn. He cannot be reasoned with, nor can he be killed. My sole surviving missile killed itself to knock out Colonel Autumn. I blanked on the code to set off the purifier, remembered it was 216. Sticky called it, Colonel Autumn lost it, and I beat Fallout 3 with only the missile launcher. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the champion tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.